everyone. Dana Brown here. I'm Zoja's Director of Marketing. In this video, we're going to continue to evolve our personal expenses app while we learn more about the Zojo programming language and how the IDE works. In previous lessons, we left a couple of tasks pending. The first one is allowing the user to enter new categories in addition to those available by default. And the second is improving our bar chart canvas subclass. In this chapter, we're going to focus on improving the categories, leaving the work on the bar charts for the next chapter of this course. So the first thing that we're going to do is change our UI control for selecting the categories that offers by default a series of four entries. For that, we're going to change the pop up menu into a combo box control. If we look at the UI controls that are available in the library, we can see one of them is the combo box. This control combines the functionality found both in a text field and a pop-up menu. A really easy way to change our current pop-up menu to a combo box is typing combo box as the new value for the super field in the inspector panel associated with our pop-up menu. Once done, we can see how the control changes to the new one in the window layout. In addition, we can see how the name we gave to the control is not the best one because it includes the list box word, and this is not a list box at all. So let's change its name to category combo. And because we changed the name of the control, we also need to change it in all of the lines of code that we're using the previous name. For example, we can see how we're using the old category list box name in the action event for the add button control. A very easy way to do these kind of changes is by clicking on the loop icon uh, in the lower area of the IDE in order to access a new IDE panel. Here we only need to type the old name of the control in the left search field. As a result, the list box below it will display all of the matching items where that name is used. Then we only need to type the new name on the field at the right, uh, at the right where we find the all button that when pressed will change all of the matching items with the new text type in the su substitution field. But we can also set the reach of the substitution to the entire project to the selected items and its subclasses to the selection item or just to the selected text. In our case, we want to apply the substitution to all of the matching items in the project. So we leave the by default option selected, clicking the all button in order to apply these changes. Now you can see how the fragment of code that was using the category list box has been replaced with category combo. So this is a really nice feature provided by the IDE and that we can use to do these kind of changes amongst others. Going back to the added combo box control, in order to add the text typed by the user as a new menu item available in the combo box menu, we need to add the key down event handler to this control. This is the event that will be fired on every user keystroke in the control. Next, we need to type the following snippet of code in the associated code editor for the key down event handler. The key down event handler receives the key pressed by the user as its parameter. So the first thing we do is check if the keystroke is for the ASCII code of the return key or the tab key, and also if the text property is not empty. In order to get the ASCII code of a string character, we can use the ASC method. So if these conditions are met, then we will proceed to execute the code inside the block. The first thing we do in this block of code is assign the number of items in the menu to the rows of variable. Then we declare an array of strings that we will use to store all of the already available entries in the menu. Then in the for next block, we will check to see if the text entered by the user is already among the menu items. If that is the case, then we exit the method returning the value false. Otherwise, we will continue iterating the entries in the menu, adding them to the options array. Once we exit the for next block, 
we add the new entry to the options array, converting it to title case and using the sort method afterwards in the array so that they're sorted alphabetically. Once that's done, we only need to remove the current items in the combo box control and add all the items in the array as the new entries for the menu. So with this fragment of code, we'll be able to add new entries to our categories combo box. In fact, if we execute the app at this point, we can see how it works. As you can see, the combo box menu starts with the by default entries we set using the inspector panel in the IDE. But if we type a new category in the combo box text field, pressing afterwards the tab key, then we can see how the new category is added as a new entry to the combo box menu while all of the entries are kept alphabetically sorted. Now let's add the books category and the menu still keeps all of the entries sorted. Let's add the movies category just to confirm that it won't be added again to the menu. It works. The movies category is not duplicated amongst the available options in the combo box menu. We can still improve the user experience a bit more with the combo box using one of the already available features in the combo box class. Wouldn't it be great to have text auto completion? All we need to do for that is to enable the allow autocomplete switch under the behavior section of the inspector panel for our combo box control. So if we run the app again and start typing some new categories like movies and music, the next time we start typing the text auto completion feature will start doing its magic offering all of the uh, text with the suggested ones. So now we need to type every new category every time we run the app. That is, they aren't saved to the disk. So let's fix that problem. Probably you remember from previous chapters that the methods load data and save data were the ones loading and saving the expenses data from disk and to disk respectively. These are the expenses data stored in the categorized expenses property. So let's use these methods to load and save the data for our categories combo box as well. Let's start with the code for loading the categories from the disk. Place the cursor at the end of the code editor for the load data method and type the following fragment of code. If we look at the first line of code, we were setting the F variable pointing to a file with the name of the application. Now we're using that same variable but changing its child file so it points to the app name plus the dash category suffix. So this will be the text file storing the names of the categories. Next, we're using the usual checks to verify the F variable is pointing to a valid object and that that file exists on a disk. If that is the case, then we open the file as a stream of text using the already known text input stream class and storing it, the created object, into the tis variable. Then if we have a valid object in the tis variable, we read all of the file con contents using the read all method and converting it to an array of strings using the split method and the end of line as the separator of the items. Finally, we set the result of this operation to the variable cat declared as an array of strings. All in all, once this line of code is executed, the cat array elements will be every line will every line of text found in the file opened as a stream of text. And because the last item in the cat array will always be an end of line, we simply discard it using the pop method on the cat array. One interesting thing here is the use of the call keyword. We can use it when we don't care about the value returned by calling a method, as it is the case here. Now we only need to call the sort method on the array so all of the items are alphabetically sorted, remove the current items from our combo box menu, and set all of the items from the cat array as the new menu entries for the category combo control. Now let's add the code to save the disk entries from the category combo menu. We will include that code at the end of the existing code in the save data method. Once again, re we reuse the F variable so it points to a file on disk using the app name plus the category suffix. 
Next, we remove the file in, in that case that uh, already exists. And then we open the file pointed by the F variable as a text output stream, assigning the instance to the toss variable. So if we get a valid object into the toss variable, all we have to do next is get the number of items in the category combo menu, calling the row count method for that. Then we iterate over all of the rows in the combo box menu in order to get the value, writing it as the new line of text in our file. Once we finish iterating all of the items, we call the flush method on the text output stream insta instance to make sure that all of the possible data that is in the buffer is written to the disk, closing the output stream afterwards. And that's all the code we need for both reading and saving our categories to a file on disk. Let's try it. By default, we still have the by default category set in the IDE. Let's add new category values to it. So these are added to the combo box menu and let's exit from the app so these are saved to disk using our brand new code that we just added. As a result, we can see how a new file has been created using the app name with the category suffix and whose content is the expected one which is the by default categories plus the added ones as you can see here. If we start our app again, the categories file will be open and read this time because it uh, exists on the disk now and it sets its contents as the new entries for our categories combo menu. We're now able to add new categories for our expenses and also save them to disk and retrieve them from disk on ulterior executions of the app. Hope you learned something new here today. Please leave us a comment and like this video and of course subscribe to our channel so you get notifications of new videos when they're posted.